the eyes of all hope in you, Lord, and you give them food in their right time. Glory to you, Lord. Those are the words that you've just heard sung. Welcome to St. Martin in the Fields for morning song with our choral scholars who we're delighted to have singing with us every Friday. We're going to hear them sing again now, O oh Lord, open our lips. has passed and the day lies open before us let us pray with one heart and mind as we rejoice in the gift of this new day so may the light of your presence O God set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever Amen Our psalm for today is Psalm 54.
Our first reading is taken from the first book of Kings, chapter 18, beginning to read at verse 21. Elijah then came to near to all the people and said, How long will you go limping with two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. The people did not answer him a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I, even I only, am left a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets number 450. Let two bulls be given to us. Let them choose one bull for themselves, cut it in pieces, and lay it on the wood, but put no fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood, but put no fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord, the God who answers by fire is indeed God. All the people answered, Well spoken. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose for yourself one bull and prepare it first, for you are many. Then call on the name of your God, but put no fire to it. So they took the bull that was given them, prepared it, and called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, crying, O Baal, answer us. But there was no voice and no answer. They limped about the altar that they had made. At noon, Elijah mocked them, saying, Cry aloud, surely he is a god. Either he is meditating, or he has wandered away or he is on a journey, or perhaps he is asleep and must be awakened. Then they cried aloud, and as was their custom, they cut themselves with swords and lances until the blood gushed out over them. As midday passed, they raved on until the time of offering of the oblation, but there was no voice, no answer, and no response. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come closer to me. And all the people came closer to him. First he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been thrown down. Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be your name. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. Then he made a trench around the altar, large enough to contain two measures of seed, Next he put the wood in order, cut the bull in pieces, and laid it on the wood. He said, Fill four jars with water, and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. Then he said, Do it a second time, and they did it a second time. Again he said, Do it a third time, and they did it a third time, so that the water ran all over the water, all over the altar, and filled the trench also with water. At the time of the offering of the oblation, the prophet Elijah came near and said, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your bidding. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, so that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering, the wood, the stones, and the dust, and even licked up the water that was in the trench. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord is indeed God. The Lord indeed is God. Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. Then they seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the Wadi Kishon and killed them there. Elijah said to Ahab, Go up and eat and drink, for there is a second of the rushing rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink. Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. There he bowed himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. He said to his servant, Go up now, look towards the sea. He went and looked and said, There is nothing. Then he said, Go again seven times. At the seventh time he said, Look, a little cloud no bigger than a person's hand is rising out of the sea. Then he said, Go and say to Ahab, Harness your chariot and go down before the rain stops. In a little while, while the heavens grew black with clouds and wind, 
there was a heavy rain. Ahab rode off and went to Jezreel, but the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. He girded up his loins and ran in front of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. It ends our first reading. Our second reading is taken from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 21, beginning to read at verse 1. When we had parted from them and set sail, we came by a straight course to Kos, and next day to Rhodes, and from there to Patra, and when we found a ship bound for Phoenicia, we went on board and set sail. We came in sight of Cyprus, and leaving it on our left, we sailed to Syria and landed at Tyre because the ship was to unload its cargo there. We looked up the disciples and stayed there for seven days. Through the Spirit, they told Paul not to go to Jerusalem. When our days there were ended, we left and proceeded on our journey, and all of them, with wives and children, escorted us outside the city. There we knelt down on the beach and prayed and said farewell to one another. Then we went on board the ship and they returned home. When we had finished the voyage from Tyre, we arrived at Ptolemais and were greeted by believers and stayed with them for one day. The next day we left and came to Caesarea and we went into the house of Philip the Evangelist, one of the seven, and stayed with him. He had four unmarried daughters who had the gift of prophecy. While we were staving, staying there for several days, a prophet known, known as Agab, Agabus came down from Judea. He came to us and took Paul's belt, bound his own feet and hands with it and said, 
Thus says the Holy Spirit, this is the way the Jews in Jerusalem will, will bind the man who owns this belt and will hand him over to the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the people there urged him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What are you doing weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound but even to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Since he would not be persuaded, we remained silent except to say, The Lord's will be done. After these days we got ready and started to go up to Jerusalem. Some of the disciples from Caesarea also came along and brought us to the house of Munson of Cyprus, an early disciple with whom we were to stay. Here ends our epistle. Let us pray. First Lord, let us thank, thank you for this new day, for the many things that we take for granted, 
for the sun, for the water that refreshes us, for the food which sustains us, for the homes that we so often take for granted. We pray for our close family and friends. We pray for all those living alone at this time. Give thanks this morning for the beauty of music, for our choral scholars lifting our hearts and minds into your presence. We pray for all musicians and performers and singers that singing and music will continue to flourish, bring healing and strength and an expression of your love. Bless all those who at this time, who are in performing arts, who are worried about their futures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray at this time for our nation, for our Prime Minister and Government and all those charged with the responsibility of making difficult decisions. We pray for all those parts of our country which are unsure of, of the future and not sure whether this virus is going to continue to grow and there will be further lockdowns. We pray for especially for those who are struggling during this time with loneliness, with old age, with mental health difficulties or with fear, or with any other difficulty. We pray that you will bring them comfort and the knowledge that nothing can separate them from the love of God. We pray for young people and for students at university, for all those at theological college and studying for the ordained ministry. We pray for your blessing upon teachers and lecturers and all those who inform and teach and inspire. We pray, Lord, for the Church at this time, that in this time of uncertainty, the faith in Christ will continue to grow, that we will be people who listen, who understand, who discern the wisdom of God, and who help support and find the best way forward for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, as we hear about that incredible power of God in the Old Testament, we pray not only that we may know the presence of God, but also the power of God to save. We pray that that may be a power for peace and for unity. As we hear of Paul's incredible courage and missionary journeys, we pray that we too will have that same courage which echoes through the scriptures, the courage to put our trust in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for every nation of the world. Into your loving care, into your safekeeping, Lord, you are everywhere. Defend and protect all those for whom we pray especially those living through times of uncertainty, conflict, poverty and need. We pray for our Christian family throughout the world. We pray for the church throughout the world and people of all faiths, that we may know your unity and know the peace that comes from you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for today. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the Gospel, that, always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Thank you all for joining Morning Song today, this choral worship to start the day. Thank you, of course, to our choral scholars and to Andrew Iris, our musical director, and to you across the country, across the world, for being with us in prayer this morning. Tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, we have our usual Saturday morning meditation at 8 o'clock. I hope you'll join us for that. And on Sunday, our choral Eucharist at 10 o'clock. And can I remind you that next Monday at 7 o'clock, we have uh, the former Archbishop Rowan Williams giving the second in our autumn lecture series, which is called uh, In What Do We Trust? And he's talking about trusting in faith and it's Rowan at his most prayerful and best. So I do hope you'll join us next Monday at 7 o'clock in the evening, and you can find out details on our website. And we'll end with a blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. My brothers, my sisters, May the Lord bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.